Well, thank you for speaking with me today. I watched the movie last night. I really enjoyed it. I jumped quite a few times. <laughs> so, um, so to start out, why don't you first talk both talk about how did you how did you become you know how did you start working on the film? How did you become connected to it? You go first, Nat. Um, my uh, my agents, uh, rep my reps knew uh, one of the producers of the film, and the producers were looking for a Latina to play Sophia, and so they asked my rep, "Do you have a Latina that you think might be interested?" And they sent me the script. I then spoke to Simon and the, the director and David and just really got taken by the whole idea of not just the script, but working with them and beyond. And that's how I jumped on the train. All right. What about you, Virginia? Well, it's pretty much the same, except for that I'm not Latina, but... Uh, <laughs> you could surprise. be. Surprise. <laughs> no. No, but it's the same thing. Like, it came through the route uh, as per usual, and we both you know, everyone involved, you know, you read the script and you're not really sure, uh, especially when it comes to this genre, whether it be horror, thriller, fantasy, sci-fi, drama, whatever it is, you know, you read the script, you, you ha sort of have your fingers crossed because um, I read everything. And this one, I just couldn't put it down. And I was so... I was so intrigued, like really, like I was intrigued by this. I wanted to know what the mystery was. And so it really held me as I was reading it. And uh, so, yeah, it was a yes, almost immediately. That's good. So um, you both have a rather rocky relationship in the film. So can you maybe talk a bit about that and then about working with each other? We'll just keep going that and then read it. Um, I love the idea of this rocky relationship between two women in a in a movie that is all about um, the well, not all about, but it's got a lot to do with female violence um, yeah. and yeah. sort of watching two very different positions on female violence and on misogyny, you know, from these two characters. And you know, I said it prior in the other interview, and I won't get tired to say it to work with. You know, an, an actress that you admire. I, I went to school for acting. Acting's, I've been chasing this career for a long time. And more than the career, the craft, I love it. Uh, and I want to work with people that love it too and that do it with the respect and the talent that, that Virginia has. So to have gotten to work with someone that has led her career in the way she has and done the projects that she has and is the sort of artist in an industry that is turning very celebrity based and she's still this actor with capital letters and exclamation points is is a gift it really is because you know we we, we the people out there may not know it because actors and filmmakers we we can we tend to keep the craft very mysterious but it's everything to have a good acting partner. It does everything to your work. So um, knowing that the the queen of scream and of many other things was going to be part of this film and I was going to get to work with her was a real gift. You totally started making me cry. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, met love, him. I love that you said that, you know, when we come to this with respect, because it's not just a job, it's a creative endeavor and it involves so much. If it's a good job, it involves our passion and our and a big part of our heart. And when it's not that way, it's it's really hard. And so when you get to work with, you know, this kind of cast, have these kind of words to say. And knowing that the filmmakers are going to treat us as women with respect. And Natalia coming in like so, so prepared um, and so committed the way that I am. And it, so we, we had, an, oh my, I, I would say you'd have to speak to this, but I think we had sort of an instant connection mm -hmm. I think because we had the focus on this. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, it re because it mattered. 
the movie mattered to us. It wasn't just a job. It was a really cool mystery that we were like, I didn't walk in it going, oh, we're going to do a horror film. And listen, I love horror. You know that. I love the genre. But we, I think everyone went into this like, this script is really interesting. And it, it's fascinating. And I, and, and so we got very into the atmosphere immediately and were committed to making this happen. And we had a wonderful director who was, you know, he, he knew he was a delight and he knew that we were a delight and everyone loved this movie. And I think you can feel that that this was a that this was a team and everyone was really committed and yeah, I was and, gonna say you don't want to people be called as they say phoning it in and you usually can tell when people aren't yes you're absolutely right you can tell when they're phoning it in and who knows why I'm not you know about criticizing other performers but or actors but you can tell when it doesn't really matter. And mm -hmm. there could be a myriad of reasons why that set wasn't right. But our set was. And we just had a really, we just had a really good experience. And we all had chemistry. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't act chemistry. It's either there or it's not. Yeah. And we had it. Yep. Is it? Oops, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I said, yep. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't want to get you off. Um, it, does having a small cast make it easier, though, to kind of develop the character? Or does it really not matter? Because obviously this is a, a pretty small cast. Well, I, I think it depends on the project. This was a 20, yeah. 18, 20 day project. So having a small cast will definitely help a small project like this. Uh, you know, I worked on Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as one of my first jobs, and I... Sometimes I think of the amount of people that went through that show. We did over a hundred. <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> but that's a different thing, right? It's on the daily that you connect throughout seven years. You know, this is like, this is the way I like to do things in life because I'm one of the most intense people I love. I, I, I know. <laughs> I love to like do things with intensity. So give me 21 days in a great cast and let's just knock it out of the park. I, I love it. Yes. I could feel that from you. Like, let's go in, let's do this. And it's not, it's not easy to make a film on such a short schedule and a low, lower budget. Um, but we made it matter. And I felt, you know, because you really set the tone for this and, and maybe you and I together, but like your focus, like we were going in and from, from the moment we got there to the moment we wrapped and after, you know, you, you carried it on your shoulders and you set the tone and then we did that together. So I think I can, I, I really feel like you can feel that these, you know, the two of us are very, very strong women and, and we were able to bring that to the screen. I did though want to ask you, Natalie, to talk though a little bit about <laughs> working with, um, with Ryan and with Mark Paul, since a lot of your scenes are also with them. So can you talk a bit about that? Of course. Um, you know, I, I had I had known about their work before I knew who they were. Um, I was nervous when I first agreed to the role of who was going to play Alex because it's a silent role. It, it, it would have to be, I knew f coming from being a classical dancer that it had to be someone that was very powerful with, within their body, you know, that could act with their eyes, that could act with facial expressions, that could act with his hands and just even the tension in his, in his, in his body. And uh, when I was told it was Ryan, I, I, I went and looked up all his work and watched a lot of it. And I knew that I had a really strong actor coming to play my husband. And then I met him and we hold very similar, similar values personally and also professionally. And so we just 
had a great click in terms of partnership and being there for each other. We really were there for each other. And he does a superb job because it's not easy to act without words uh, and to really convey emotion and, and, and tone and whatnot through your body and only your body. And then Mark Paul, you know, we all know who Mark Paul is, especially if you're of my generation. And I was so happy that it was him and all of my girlfriends that grew up watching him were so <laughs> <laughs> we're asking you, like, yeah. Yeah. But, so both of them. yeah, but 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 beyond that, you know, I, I'm so happy when I see an actor that sometimes this industry can box them into a type of hunk or uh, with Latinas, it happens all the time. That's why I'm so selective with my work because Latina, you're either the maid or you're the sex symbol, and I, you know, care. To be, I, I don't care to be either in my person. I just look for for roles that speak to me. And Mark got this role and just blew it out of the water. It's not easy to play the role he did and to be this kind of, you know, dirty gardener that has this essence to him where you don't know if he's bad or he's good. And then the weirdest scene to me of that of that script was uh, was the scene between him and I and the whole religious talk and how yeah. uncomfortable. Sophia is and how uncomfortable he needs to be and he needs to be uncomfortable but also endearing and he just played this duality so wonderful and I'm so proud um, to have worked with him and to know that he gets to expose his craft in another way you know than the one we usually see him in yeah yeah it was real and I like that both of these guys were also very focused also very prepared and as far as playing a role where you're you're not speaking, you're supposed to not really be doing much. And oh man, did he do a lot. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that, I think there's a lot of actors who would have tried to overact yep. and he could do it with just one look in, in his silence. I was very impressed by that. I agree. Not an easy role to play. Yeah, it's gonna gonna be hard to, to not be able to say anything, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you guys a little bit about the location. I'm curious where this is filmed because that whole, just the whole area is beautiful, the, the house, the gardens, yeah, everything. It was that mansion. It was Corona or where? Palos Verdes. Oh. Palos Verdes, California. It was, and it, what was it built in, Nick, the table shaking? It's like, yeah, it's the beginning of this century, 1920s, maybe the latest, I, I think. I think it was it, earlier than that. Yeah, yeah, I but think it's it this maybe. massive, like it's one of the few places you could actually call a mansion. I yeah. think yeah. it might do, I don't know if it, they have tours, but, and it, and then it's all that outdoor, this is all in one place. That long stairway, like it's something's going on there, man. Yeah, it's an estate. It's like it's an it's estate. Houses. There's a vibe there. There is a vibe there. Yeah, and it's got houses within the state. So there's this huge house, but then there's yeah. other houses. But we we didn't shoot everything in the house. We shot a lot of the exteriors there, most of the exteriors, and then we went to shoot all of the interiors in another house in more like downtown LA area. Yeah, well, it, I think it's perfect scary. for <laughs> perfect it, for, it, for a scary yeah. movie. Because like, there are these hidden gems around yeah. California and very close to LA, which more and more of them are being torn down. But in in a time that they built these, you know, huge estates and in the Spanish style. So it's kind of like a, a living museum. Yep. And I loved that part. And and maybe I was projecting a little bit like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, like I was kind of. And what what I also love is that it was, it was written for Scotland. It was lit, written to be shot in Scotland, very gloomy, the fog, that it already gives you that yeah. stone of horror and i love that it's playing opposites we're in sunny california at a villa a lot of green a lot of like oh look at this beauty and then the darkness is within which i love those contrasts in film i don't like the obvious a lot of the time and i, I think it was a good we were in the pandemic and shooting in scotland made it impossible so it was right. 
to, to California. But it was cool, like when you when you, you, you know you would drive, like how is this here? Yeah, and, you know you park and then you walk up this drive and there's the big gates and and it just is just this hidden treasure. It's so amazing. It's so I I now I can't remember who. Uh, designed it and built it but it was really an incredible thing to walk in there every day yeah really, really pretty well i think we're at about 15 minutes let me ask you really quickly what what's your favorite horror movie both of you whether it's something you've done or just in general to watch what what's your favorite oh the changeling mm. that's a that is also the haunting the original haunting uh, that was in black and white when they didn't have to shoot in black with Julie Harris, um, mm -hmm. Claire Bloom. Um, that was, they invented a new kind of sound recording to, to do that film. There was a science that they created for that film and they used it also on the changeling with George C. Scott. And that's those two are one of the scariest, both the, scariest horror film you could see find the changeling with george c scott because I, i'm actually writing it down because i don't know because the sound also the sound in the changeling is really crucial to the plot of that film the haunting is uh, unfortunately i saw it when i was very little alone and it scared the hell out of me, but made me a lifelong horror fan. Oh, Lord, you have... It is so <laughs> good. Oh, my God, that movie is so... And also, beautifully filmed. Very... The, the cinematography in The Haunting is extraordinary. And, of course, it's the big, scary manor, and, you know, and there's... The, but the the sound and the visual effects are extraordinary on both of them but that's it, amazing that you watch that it's insane that you watch that film at a young age i mean my brothers put on silver bullet which isn't that even that scary for me <laughs> at like seven and i was traumatized i don't think i watched a scary movie until like 10 years later again i was so traumatized <laughs> Um, I think for me, not for little kids, no, <laughs> yeah, no. definitely not. Um, I don't know. There's so many. It's so hard to. Uh, I loved uh, of this time period of na the now. Let's say Midsummer is something I love. Is a film I I love talking about duality. A scary also film. Also a great mystery. Midsummer yeah, that's all in daylight. Mystery. The fact that they terrified us in daylight with flowers. <laughs> yes. I, I never mean, thought of that. Oh, I yeah. Know, it, oh, God. Florence, you're absolutely Florence, right. Florence Pugh is out of this world. So I love that. Of course, I love, and 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 Virginia mentioned it in another interview, because it holds one of my, the greatest actors and one of my favorites, uh, the, the the first Exorcist. I, it took me a long time to watch that film, to have the, the pants to watch it. And I finally watched it um, many years ago, but it took me until like I was 20 something to watch it. I was so terrified to look at that um yeah uh what else i'm trying to think i watched very I watched, young i watched the original night of the living dead when i was oh. in a lake house and my my dad and my brother decided to go out to dinner and he just had this little black and white tv and they're like we'll be right back and you know we're you know and i was i think i was like 10 so it was okay for me to be there and and so I was like oh wow it's a scary movie <laughs> and I was so that movie is so well structured yeah. and 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 it's really it I I was not the same I was not all right but no. watching that by myself because I was not supposed to turn on the TV <laughs> Well, I have to have to check out some of these films. I, I'm not good <laughs> watching stuff by myself either, so I'll find something to watch. I know you have to. That's why I, I said I, I jumped quite a few times when I watched this yesterday because it was late when I watched it. So, <laughs> I where did you jump? I'm sorry. Where did you jump? I love knowing where the. the um, probably the biggest thing with the painting when it. 
that's that's probably the biggest one. <laughs> oh, when he first so moves, and then when he's gone, it's like going on. <laughs> yeah, he's so I like, oh, no, he's Yeah, that's that's when you you're like, I don't know if I want to sit here by myself. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I look forward to, to everybody else seeing it. So, thank you. Thanks, thank you, Jamie. Jamie. Thanks. Appreciate it.